We have a tale of very different drought monitors coming out across the West, which has been particularly hard hit with this latest round of drought. For California, no uh, difference in the week to week numbers. Still extreme drought covering 43% of the state, whereas exceptional drought 17% of the state. Not too surprising, we are in the driest part of the year. Our reservoir levels will also reflect this. We're not getting any precipitation, so anything that's coming out isn't necessarily being replaced. And it is about the point in the year when we reach the lowest levels for those reservoirs. Shasta for California being the largest is at 57% of its historical average, only 35% full right now. Oroville is also one of the bigger ones. Historical average 63% right now, only 37% full. Folsom's a really interesting one. Right now we're at 83% of historical average, 47% full. That had been running very full. And I'll explain why we're seeing those lower numbers as well as why it was so full earlier in the season. And then we move just a little bit farther to the south. Two other large reservoirs here. New Malonis, 47% of historical average right now at 27% full. Don Pedro, a little bit better, 76% of average right now, 55% full. But what happened was in the Central Valley, they actually were conserving water a little bit earlier because of two really bad seasons. And so conservation happened a little bit earlier historically over the past two years. Here's a look at the numbers. And like I said, this is the driest part of the year. You can see why this is really hard to believe for some folks across the country how little rain falls in the months of June, July, August, September. We really have four months where we almost get no rain coming through. We'll get a drop here or there, but it just doesn't really amount to much. So after April, basically the faucet shuts off and doesn't start to pick up again until October. We've seen our levels go down at Folsom, down over five feet in just the past 10 days. Again, there's nothing coming in, so everything coming out isn't necessarily going to be replaced except a little trickle coming up from the upper end of the American River, which flows out of the Sierra and then gravity will take it downhill. It's all snow melt that eventually makes it into some of our reservoirs. As we look at Lake Mead, though, this got big headlines because of the historic lows that were happening, but it has been up about a foot and a half over the past 10 days. And again, the drought monitor looking much different across the West. This is how things started off back in May. Now keep in mind, this was about as California was going to enter its dry season, whereas some parts of the Southwest were about to head into the North American monsoon season. And we saw big improvements happening across portions of Arizona and New Mexico, even Southern Nevada and uh, parts of Utah as well. Southern Nevada happens to be home to Lake Mead, and so numbers came up slightly. Everything kind of flowing in from the Colorado River into Lake Mead helped a little bit. Obviously not enough, but any little drop helps, right, with historic lows like that. All right, let's get into the uh, North American monsoon. What is the North American monsoon? We've been talking a lot about that, even in California, because we've seen a fairly active summer season in the Sierra with a number of thunderstorms popping up. Well, this is atmospheric moisture that is basically held just to the south here, and the monsoon season runs roughly between June and September. Then we start to see the upper level dynamics happening. We get a high pressure ridge forming just off to the east of the four corners, which is going to start to pull that moisture northward as well as that thermal low at the surface due to the land warming uh, quicker than the ocean surface waters. So we see this pulled northward here throughout the course of June, uh, July, August, September, helping to produce some of that moisture. But we've also heard of the catastrophic flooding that can happen from this as well with drought conditions and everything so parched. It's like water hitting concrete. The land just can't absorb it. So it's kind of a double edged sword with that monsoon season. We start to sh see a shift once we head into the end of September into October. That high pressure ridge starts to move its way south. The jet stream pattern starts to dip its way south. And here comes the low. Uh, coming out of the Gulf of Alaska and the Pacific, drawing in that moisture into Washington, Oregon, and even parts of California. It's not always a direct hit, and we don't always benefit from this, but it really can bring up these numbers. As you can see, what a dramatic difference from where we were seeing August and September all the way into December, January, and February, the wettest time of year, generally speaking, 
for the Central Valley. So this is when we're going to see some of the peak precipitation coming through, not only for the valley, but also for this year. This year can sometimes linger into March as well, which helps the snowpack and eventually will help that runoff. So where did we shape up as we're almost a month away from the rainy season starting up again? The last one wasn't horrible. If we look at the raw numbers, they actually look pretty decent, especially for Northern California, almost 19 inches for South Lake Tahoe, Redding, Eureka, almost 26 and a half inches of precipitation coming through Sacramento, 16 and a half, and even Santa Barbara, 10 and a half inches of rain, and then San Diego, just slightly over six inches, Los Angeles, over 10 inches of rain. But how does that compare to the averages? Because that's really going to tell the story. And where we saw some of the hardest hit regions, extreme Northern California. Now, if you recall that graphic that I was showing just a moment ago, where Shasta, the largest reservoir, is down in the 30 percentile for how much it's uh, at capacity. Well, that's just north of Redding. And you can see we were down about 14 and a half inches of precipitation coming in through that region. Now, notably, the numbers are much different for San Francisco, Sacramento and South Lake Tahoe, where we are down well, about an inch and a half or so right through that pipeline there that runs right along Interstate 80, where we had an exceptional atmospheric river come through those big plumes of moisture in the Pacific that happened just as we were starting off the rainy season. It was a boom or bust situation though throughout the entire winter season. We got that one exceptional atmospheric river. Everything else was on the normal side, nothing too extreme. We saw a couple of pretty good strong atmospheric rivers coming in through Southern California, but the big one really hit right at the beginning of the water year and then everything just shut off. We had a decent December, but it really was a boom or bust situation for us. That was a La Nina year and we're heading into another one as well. Typically, this is what this favors. Now it is not going to be hand in hand. It doesn't mean that because of La Nina, this is what things will look out look like, but it does give us a fairly good idea. So a drier than average Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Southern Nevada, which again, here we go with Lake Mead, per perhaps will be hard hit with this winter season, a wetter than average Northern California through the Pacific Northwest, but Northern California last year it was not wetter than average. It was in fact much drier than average, some of the driest on record. And that's pretty much what the Climate Prediction Center is saying for the next several months. Expect drier than average conditions starting to form as that monsoon season starts to taper off and we head into what is perhaps the driest time of the year. Now keep in mind in California, we rely not only on our state water, but we also rely on some of the water coming in from the Colorado River Basin. So if that system is stressed, that means we have to start tapping into something called groundwater. It's the water underneath, uh, underneath our feet, and it has been hard hit over the past several years because of obviously we went through the historic drought from 2012 to 2016. And so now we've got these monitoring systems, the groundwater watch. What's happening? Well, 64% of our wells are below normal. We've got 994 dry wells reported this year alone. Graphically speaking, what does this look like when we plot it on a map? Well, you can see all the red that is denoted on this map right here. That is in the 10th percentile for much below normal, even very low levels, and it hits right through the Central Valley, a big area for agriculture in the state and industry. We talked to the U.S. Geological Survey more about how this is hitting California this year. Well, California, you know, uses a lot of water because a lot of people in a lot of agriculture and industry. Um, we have kind of three main reservoirs, the snowpack, the kind of reservoir and stream system. And then when water seeps into the ground and under the ground, it's known as groundwater. It's kind of an invisible resource where the water kind of fills up the, the basins, um, and kind of like bathtubs with the water in between the sand and clay grains um, filling in the void spaces. We can tap into this water by drilling wells, then pulling water to the surface. But during drought, when water sources are scarce, we rely heavily on this savings bank of water. As more and more water is drawn to the surface, there's less underground, resulting in the land sinking or subsiding. It's scary. We look at the you know, groundwater records and some of the subsidence trends from some of the data we collected. You know, we're getting towards historically low groundwater levels and 
subsidence is creeping back up at a steeper rate than it has been. Claudia says it's becoming increasingly difficult to bring up those levels. Yeah, there's two ways to get at that bank account. Put more water in or stop taking as much water out. Um, I think we can get there, but it, I think it's going to take both sides of that equation.